The idea of agile is a lot about flexibility, transparency, teamwork, and a sense of achievement. And so the process is, has really come from the software development world, which is what I do, I'm a software developer, and we all know that tech moves really fast. Like if we look back 10 years, and tech and we look now, like it moves really fast. So the people developing tech have built up processes around that so that when we're in the office and we realize that everything's changing that fast, we can move that fast, we can change directions that fast. And that's what agile is. But now obviously the church moves a little bit slower than the tech industry, so we are going to modify this a little bit. And so I just want to explain to you what the principles are that we're going to follow and then some of the processes that need to be put in place and that we've started putting in place after the last leaders meeting um, for what we're doing with Agile as an Agile church. So I mentioned some things um, just now, uh, transparency, teamwork and a sense of achievement. These things are very important. Transparency is handled in the Agile Agile in an office environment by making sure that the team talks to each other all the time. Um, every day we have a meeting for 15 minutes where every person says what they've been doing and what they're going to be doing for the next day and for the previous day. And that means that everybody's on the same page and even if I'm working on one project and my colleague's working on another, we both know what's happening in both projects and if I need to jump onto his project, I can, and vice versa. So that's, we need that in the church as well. We need to be able to say that the different parts of the church are working together, that the different parts of the church know what are happening between each other, so that just because I lead the youth, it doesn't mean that that's the only thing I need to know what's happening with. And because somebody else is leading another portfolio, it, they still need to know what I'm doing with the youth. And that sense of transparency and leads into a sense of working together. So the form of Agile that we're going to be following is called Scrum. Now we're all good South Africans, we know what a rugby Scrum looks like. And we know that a rugby Scrum doesn't work if we don't work as a team. Uh, we've all seen a scrum fall over or go in circles where one person's pushing in one direction and the other person's pulling in the other direction and it just doesn't work sometimes. And we need to remember that as a team we have to work together to achieve something and to actually make it work. We have to work together, be on the same page and build up that scrum as a team. We all, one of the big things to remember is if something works out, if we achieve something, if we have a success, it's not my success, it's not your success, it's the team's success, it's our success. But the same goes for failure. There is no one person responsible for a failure. The team failed. And we take responsibility together for the good and for the bad. And we make it ours. We take some ownership of it and we take from that, we can get a sense of very real achievement because we actually are seeing the impact that we're making. Um, often, like in the church, we'll see that one person, the minister usually has a big picture of what's happening all over the church and they can see the achievement, but each person doesn't really see that they're making a big difference. When we work as a team and we take goals and achieve goals as a team, we can say, my little bit of work towards that goal meant we achieved that goal and look at what we've done. And we get that intense sense of we have made something work. We have achieved something. And that's part of what the Scrum Agile process gives us. So we've got a sense of transparency, we've got a sense of teamwork, and we've got a sense of achievement. But how do we actually you know, make that happen? So we have some processes 
that we put in place, um, one of which we actually started at the previous leaders' meeting, which was what I call a grooming and planning session, where we took some high-level goals that we got from our project manager or minister, and well, she really is a project manager in this, in this sense. And she set us some high-level goals that kind of work towards a big project, which is the shepherd's story. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. But we took those goals and we broke them down into tasks, something that we can say is definitively done when it is done. And each of those tasks makes up that one goal or story. And we went through three, and it took us half an hour to get through three. Um, but it was worthwhile because we collaborated, we agreed on what is the scope of this goal. What will it take to say that this goal was a success? And now we can say at the next leaders meeting, hopefully we can say every task under each of those goals is complete. And then we can say we achieved our goals and we'll have moved forward in the project and we'll have a sense of, in this quarter, what we have achieved. And we'll have to work as a team to achieve these goals. And that's exactly the point, is we work together to achieve these goals. So that process we'll do each quarter at each leaders meeting. And that will make up what I call a sprint. So in my business world, where I'm working with people on this every day, that's two weeks. In the church, where things move more slowly and we tend to do things once a week, we make it a quarter because it's kind of, it's a longer cycle, but we do about the same amount in that cycle. Then the other process that is incredibly important that I mentioned earlier when talking about transparency is something that we call a stand-up. Now in my world, where everybody's in the office, I can say at 10 o'clock, Every day, okay, everybody stand up. And everybody has to stand for this meeting. Um, and the, pro the reason we stand is to keep the meeting short because nobody talks for a long time when they're all standing. Um, the rule is you have two minutes to talk or less if you've got a big team. And you explain, you answer basically four questions. What did I do yesterday? or what did I do in the last period of time since we had a stand-up? What am I going to do today? Or what am I going to do from now until the next stand-up? What am I blocked on? What am I stuck with? And what do, I, like, what do I need help with? And then, did I learn something interesting? So the last two are not always answered. But sometimes, no, I'm not blocked on anything. I'm just keeping going. And Sometimes we didn't learn anything interesting in the last day. Um, but once we've answered those questions, we're able to have a bigger picture of where are we? What status are our goals in? How close are we to completing one of our goals? And we kind of come together at a, as a team at that point. Now, obviously, um, we're not going to manage to get all the leaders together in a room for 15 minutes every day or even every week. And so we have to come up with a new process, a new way of doing it for that works for the church. And the beauty of Agile is that we mold the process to fit our needs. And there's a whole lot of people who tell us we're not doing it properly, and I'll tell them they've never tried to do it with a church. Um, and we have different needs to the business world. So the idea at the moment, and we'll change it if it doesn't work and try something else, is that we're going to do our stand-ups more or less every two weeks, which gives us quite a lot of time to have done something and some time to be to plan for ahead of us. And in those two weeks, like at that two week point, 
we're going to try do something over WhatsApp or some kind of asynchronous communication so, so that we don't have to you know, dial everybody into a conference call or something like that, which gets very complicated. So it'll be something like a WhatsApp group where everybody puts their answers to the four questions. And in that, we hold each other accountable to achieving our goals because it is one of the most embarrassing things to come to stand up. And I've done it many times, but it's still embarrassing. You come to stand up and you're like, so yesterday, uh, I'm not actually sure what I did. And today, well, hopefully I'll get to the things I said I was going to do yesterday. Um, and I mean, that happens once or twice a week to everybody. Um, but it's a sense of accountability of, if I can't say that I've been doing anything uh, towards these goals at stand-up, I'm going to feel embarrassed about it. I feel like I'm letting the team down. And so we work together and we build each other up and we get to a point where at every stand-up we can say, I did this or I, I pushed on these pieces so that something is going to move towards being done. It's not, I completed a goal all by myself in the last two weeks. That's not the point. It's, I worked towards the goal in this way. And I'm going to continue working towards the goal in this way. And hopefully we can come up with a way that works of doing this via WhatsApp or something similar. Um, that would be amazing. But we're going to have to try it and see and try again and see and what I always tell people at work is it's an iterative process. We do one thing and we do it for a sprint or we do it for a period of time. And if it doesn't work, we look at it, we work out why it didn't work, we change it and we do something else for the next period of time. And that's how it's supposed to work is we can change things. We can change direction easily, smoothly, and quickly by following the process of having our goals set and knowing where we're going in the long term and then using this process to work together and move forward. So I think I'd like to explain what we went through on, at the leaders meeting. Um, this is pretty awesome. We actually have a what, what I call a sprint board. Now, so when I do this at work, we have an electronic one, but because we don't have all that technology and we're not a software development company, we're a church, we have something that we're sticking on the notice board, which is very, very church traditional. Um, so what we've got here, it's very small to show you from here. But we've got this as we call our sprint board. We've got our stories down the side. We have our project written at the top, which is amazing. So we always know what we're working towards. And then these little cards, these are our tasks. These are the things that we defined at the leaders meeting to say, if we can complete all of these tasks, we will complete the stories. So the aim is before the next leaders meeting, all the little cards that are on this side should be on this side. And when they're all moved over to this side, we're done. Uh, if we finish before the next leaders meeting, we're allowed to make more stories and more tasks. But I, I think we start with this. So just briefly, I'm going to read you the project and, and the stories. So the project, and this is long term, is our vision is to have 100 people caring for shepherd groups by the end of 2018. So that's end of next year. So it's a long running project. We aim to have 50 of these groups meeting together for at least an hour, at least once a month. And then we've got our tasks. So we've got, two, uh, we've got a quite a big project and our aim is to meet it the end of next year. And we're gonna use this process to hopefully get us there. So the stories that we had, the first one was allocate sheep and start. So to have shepherd groups, we have to have sheep and we have to have shepherds. And that was the story. 
And we had a whole bunch of tasks here. Defining shepherd responsibilities, defining number of sheep per group, uh, have, making sure we have an up-to-date record of shepherds and sheep. That one's been marked as done, so that means we do have an up-to-date record, which is good. Um, what else? Uh, Jenny to meet with the zone leaders. I think that's happening today. So that's in process. It's happening. And then there's things that we still need to do. Uh, at least some groups start weekly uh, WhatsApp groups, uh, stand-ups, whatever. That's a, something for once we've finished these tasks, we've got more tasks to do before we can say we've really allocated our groups and started meeting. Uh, we've got zone leaders, some tasks for the zone leaders, meeting with their sub-zone leaders, and sub-zone leaders meeting with their leaders. And so these are tasks that we'll be doing as an ongoing thing, but which we can say once we've started doing them, they're more or less they're in process to done. And if, we, if they're all in process at the next leaders meeting, they'll probably just be moved to done uh, when we get there. Our next story is a weekly stand-up. So I said this one's not really a story in the sense of agile process, because it's more of a like, we should be doing that anyway because of the process. But it was useful to talk about it at the leaders' meeting. And so what we came up with was that we need to set a date for two weeks from the leaders' meeting for our first uh, WhatsApp stand-up. And so, you know, that's the first thing to do is to set a date. When are we going to do our first one? And then the other task here was find out who has WhatsApp and make sure we establish a communication process. Because obviously, if one person doesn't have WhatsApp, we could leave them out completely. And then you've got your one person in your scrum team who doesn't know which play we're making. And they do the other one. And your scrum falls apart. So we need to make sure that our communication process is established and we all know what it is. Then the third story that we managed to get to was to cover the process in prayer. And there are some tasks here that are available for people to pick up, basically, which is giving prayer pointers around the process. What should we be praying for? Uh, share prayers over WhatsApp. Uh, think of additional ways. OK, right. And here it says, please add tasks and volunteer. So this is a bit of an open story. If there's more things that you want to, you think we can do to cover this process in prayer, come up with a task, volunteer to do it, we'll put it on the board, and it'll move us towards having the process covered completely in prayer. And then there was another task of put a section on the prayer diary, which is a very concrete task. It's a lovely example of a task in a story. It is something that we know exactly when it has been done because we'll pick up the next prayer diary and we'll have pray for the Agile Church process on one of the blocks and we'll know that this task was done. So, yes, we'll try over the next quarter to move all of these tasks from this lane through this lane to this lane. We'll move the tasks around as people pick them up Hopefully we'll add people's names to them. So you can see we've got Jenny written on some of these tasks because she's working on it. And we can allocate a task to a person or to a group of people. It's very common for more than one person to work together to achieve one task. And we'll work towards having everything done. And if we get to the next leaders meeting and everything's moved across, that's going to be a great feeling. We're going to say, look at what we have done. And hopefully, with Agile, we'll be able to do that with each quarter, to say, look at what we have done, look how far we have come, and look at what we know that each person has been doing. Look at how we have been able to work together to make each quarter a successful quarter in the church. And I think that is all I had to talk about. So, thank you, everybody.